All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me today for Kineo Totara Office Hours. It's been a long time since I have done one of these. Um, as of late, Alex has been taking all of these, um, but I got to do it because he's off getting married, so I get to do it this week. Um, today what we're going to talk about is new seminar settings in version 12. So version 12 um, gives us a few more things that we can do and a little more functionality, um, and we're going to take a look at those things today. For those of you who may not know me, my name is Taylor Craig. I'm the Senior Platforms Consultant at Kineo, um, and what that means is I am a trainer. <laughs> um, but I do work with people as we implement them. I work with you all the way from the sales process all the way through until you go live, and then sometimes even after that, um, I get the privilege of coming back and training some more and working with you guys as well there. So that's a little bit about myself. I've been with Kineo. This is my fourth year. I'm going on fifth year. All right, so what we're going to talk about today, something new to seminars, is a sign-up workflow. So you can now designate the number of times a user can sign up for something. Um, used to, it was just they signed up and that's what they got. Um, but now you can designate how many times someone can sign up. You can determine how they sign up. So for example, if I was a no-show to the first event that I signed up to, then I'm able to sign up again once I've been marked as a no-show, I can sign up to other events. So that's something new. Um, and then also it will clear or it will expire a wait list now. So if I was on the wait list, it'll, once that session has passed, clears that wait list out and then I'm free again to go and sign up for another session. Okay. Um, and then there's a notification that goes with that cleared expired wait list. Basically it uh, sends that notification and says, hey, You've been cleared, you can go sign up now, okay? There's also some additional functionality as well as um, for the administrator. So some stuff that you can do now, you can now take attendance while the session is in progress. So that's wonderful. Um, and then also there's a new administrative setting at the system level that kind of allows you to um, narrow that list down a little bit for those previous sessions because that previous session list gets super long. We've actually customized that for a client or two, um, and now there's some there's some there's some built-in functionality there. So let's just take a look. All right, let me get this over here so I can remember what I'm talking about. Let's first and foremost let's talk about that sign-up workflow. So it's going to be inside of your seminar settings. So we're just going to go in, zoom in a little bit. There's now a section called Sign Up Workflow. This require approval by, this was moved out of the approval section area and it was moved into the Sign Up Workflow, so it's now part of it. So now you can say how many times can a user sign up. So you can allow them to sign up one time, ten times, or unlimited. Um, you can tell they can sign up for the same event or a different event. It's not going to have to be the same event that they sign up for. I think there is a question. Excellent. So, and then restrict subsequent signups. So here's what you can do. So you can say they can only sign up again if they've fully attended or if they've partially attended or if they were a no-show. So this is going to give you that functionality to say, okay, this is, you can sign up again, but you have to have been marked as one of these other things. Okay. Um, here's that cleared expired wait list to just kind of get a little more detail. So a wait list for event gets cleared when they start allowing users to sign up to a new event. And there's this is the name of that notification. I'm glad I opened this up. It's called wait list sign up expired notification. And that now gets sent out letting users know that they can then go back in and they can start to sign up again. We all, we've always had the declare interest option at least since probably version 9 at the very earliest, I would think. So that one's always been there, same with the requiring approval by. So that has been there as well. Let's take a look at that notification. Let me grab the title of it just so I can do a search for it. So for those of you who may not know, you can send a notification for every seminar that you uh, create. So you can, it's got its own set of notifications. So if you have three different seminars, the entire seminar, not an event, so the entire module of seminar, if you had three of those, all three of those are sending their own notifications. 
And this is where it's located underneath the seminar administration for that particular one, the very bottom notifications. Here's that new one right here. Waitlisted, sign up expired. Let's go take a look at what it says. Okay. So basically, it's letting them know waitlisted group has signed up for the following course has been canceled due to the event starting. So waitlist cancellation. Personally, looking at this notification, the word cancellation to me would uh, make me as a learner go, huh, guess I can't do anything. So this might be something to be aware of. This might be something to come in here and maybe change the wording on and say waitlist I don't know, re reword it where it sounds like the learner can go do something now, they can go take action. Um, just be aware of those types of things. As always, you can send a manager a copy, you can send them a copy of it as well. Status checkbox means that it's active and it will be sent. So let's take a look also in here. Taking attendance while a seminar is in progress. So I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to add some attendees to a session, and then I'm going to set it to be in progress. So we're going to throw there we go. I'm going to throw these folks in here. This is, just, this is a functionality that we've always had, being able to override and just add people to a session. What I'm going to do here for this event, we're going to jump back out into the seminar. I'm going to set it where it's happening right now um, so that I can demo actually an event in progress. Okay, so we're going to change the time. To today and we'll just do it an all-day event so it doesn't expire on us all right so you'll notice that my status changed from booking open to event in progress meaning that a learner can't come in and sign up at the last minute and you'll notice my sign up option went away when I did that so I'm going to click on the attendees link and now check that out. That Take Attendance tab is active. Um, so this is a nice new feature um, that we weren't able to do in earlier versions. And a lot of people want to be able to do this while the people are literally standing in front of them. So this is really helpful that we can now go in and we're going to mark Jon Snow as a no-show because the end of Game of Thrones was disappointing. Spoiler alert, I should probably put that in there. Sophia Petrillo will say she was fully attended, and SpongeBob will say he was fully attended. Okay, so we can take attendance while we're working through this and while the session is in progress, which is wonderful. Um, and also, this would allow, of course, if you had any completions based around uh, uh, attendance or anything like that, it's going to trigger those completions, and so learners are going to be able to access anything that they may need to access in the session in that live event while they're there with you. So that's something to be aware of. You can now do that. You don't have to go in and trick the system or anything like that anymore, which is great. So moving back out to my seminar course, let's take a look at this. This is cool. So now we have, this is a, you set this at the system administration level. I'll show you where you do it. But this is a new feature, showing events from the last 30 days. So right now, I only see two events. But if I click Show All, I can now see three events, which is wonderful. So there's one that happened back in June. So um, that's something to keep in mind. That's something that's available. Really, really a nice feature. Um, and where you set that, that is going to be at the system level. It is going to be underneath Learning. Seminars. It's underneath Seminar Global Settings right here. And it's down here somewhere. 
there it is right there. Previous events time period is the name of the setting. And you can do it this way. So you can say show all previous events, which is what we know and love and what we're used to. Um, and now we have the ability, we can say 30 days, 60, 90, 120, 150, you can read. So there's lots of different options here that you can now do. Um, I personally like the last, just show me the last 30 days. I don't really need to see all the rest. Um, but in some situations, you may have a lot of sessions that have happened in the last 30 days. I know we've got other clients who are uh, in that boat. Um, and so we have actually built a customization around this. Um, well, not around this specifically, but before this existed, we built a customization for a particular client that has literally hundreds of seminar sessions that happen and take place at a time. Um, and so we've actually fixed that customization where they just don't see any of the previous events um, unless they need to see it. Only certain roles actually see it. So that's something to keep in mind if you find yourself in that particular situation. But this is pretty good for just your, your typical Totara user. So this is great. Let me show you one more thing that's kind of a gotcha, especially if you're coming from an older version and moving into 12, um, that I have noticed that I, I feel like hopefully one day it's going to get there, but this is something to be aware of for version 12. So if you are using seminar direct enrollment, which I'm sure some of you probably are, um, in version 11, let's take a look at seminar direct enrollment as an 11, version 11. So this is the old catalog versus the new catalog. So our old catalog here, when we clicked the info, I, we got this. So if we had seminar direct enrollment turned on, I just had to click the I and then I'm able to see that I can sign up from here. As an administrator, I can kind of manage the event from here. I don't actually have to go into the course to do anything. In version 12, it's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just something to be aware of. In version 12, the new catalog works a little bit different. So when I click on the card, I see the information. You can, uh, you can configure this catalog to show um, a bunch of information. You can have it show the users, the courses, uh, description in here. You can have it display. You'll see here this nice little icon letting you know what it is. You can put images. There's a lot of configuration that you can do around this catalog, but it doesn't give me that management area to actually sign up just from this screen. So the learner does have to click here, and then they do need to click Enroll. And then they come here, and they are able to see the seminar sessions that they can sign up for. And then, as we know, with the seminar direct enrollment, it's also going to enroll them into the course. So they're able to do it here. It does add one more click. Um, but I do feel like hopefully um, one day it will be on the catalog as an option. I may actually submit that as a feature request now that I think about it. Um, so that is going to be the major changes to seminar, but they're good changes. They're things that people have been asking for for a long time um, and things that are available and easy for you to use now. So all of that to say, thank you again for joining me, guys. And... Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll throw this up here. And you do have the question box. And then if you need a mic in the question box, tell me. And um, I will um, give you a mic.